So in this video, I'm going to walk you through the new Copilot Studio user interface because this has been highly refreshed since build 2024. All right, guys, complete new UX for Copilot Studio post build. Hopefully you guys are really liking this new user interface, but as with anything, there's going to be a bit of a learning curve for people to pick up where did things go, where did things move. So in this video, I'm wanting to make sure that you get those details. So what I'm gonna do is walk through a bunch of the different user interface components, and we'll start at the home screen for Copilot Studio now, which is very different than what it used to look like. You'll see at the top that you have like different buttons that you can hit and a box where you can just type in what it is that you want to create and it will go ahead and do that for you. And if you pop in something like help desk here or expense tracking or HR benefits, it's just basically putting something in there for you. Um, and so your mileage may vary on how good those are. It's just meant to get you going. Now, when we go down below this, now you'll see your recently, um, recently opened or saved uh, co-pilots. You'll see that I've been working on some videos for you guys, so there's some new ones over here. Uh, if it's a newer co-pilot, it will definitely have the newer logo on it. If, uh, if you see the older logos, um, it's because of the, those are your co-pilots that were built in the old user experience. And I'll, I'll show you that what that looks like in just a second. Now we'll go on down and you'll see that there are templates now. So you have like safe travels, website Q and A, store operations. You're gonna see that these are very basic starting points right now. The whole idea is that we're going to look to be able to bring more templates and things of that nature. You'll see that these are in preview at this point. And then down at the bottom, you've got a whole bunch of uh, like educational content and things of that nature. Um, that are available for you. So let's let's scroll back up here and let's explore this left-hand menu menu that's uh, here now. So now we have a create, and you'll see that if you hit the create button, you're going to have new copilot and new copilot action. Now a new copilot action, if we click this, you're going to see that now we have additional copilots that we can extend beyond just M365 copilot. Now you have copilot for sales extensibility. And these are basically building those different extensions. So if you click on either of those, that's what you're going to head toward. So that's a, a new piece of it. Then if we click on the new copilot, uh, what would happen is it's going to kick off the creation process. But before we do that, Again, you'll see a whole bunch of different templates down here, uh, and you can even see that are coming coming soon, some additional ones, like I told you before. So now I'm gonna keep going down this menu and then we'll come back in and we'll go through uh, some additional aspects. If you want the video that shows you the new creation experience, I've already created one of those, and I'll post a link here for you guys to be able to go and uh, go watch that video to go through all the creation experience. Um, today we're going to spend more time just in the user experience. All right. So with that, like I said, if you click a new Copilot, you will get into the creation experience. Again, I'm not going to go into this here, um, but I want you to know that that's where that button takes you. Um, now, if I go to the Copilots list, this is going to give me a list of all the different co-pilots that are in this particular environment. You'll see that the gear and all that stuff hasn't changed up here, um, but you'll also see that you can import a co-pilot. So if you've exported a co-pilot solution and you want to import it in, you can do it here. Again, another button that will take you to creating a new co-pilot. And you'll see that there is this icon, which is the new, but then this is an example of an icon of one of the older co-pilots uh, as an example. So you'll see all of these are the older ones that I was working on with you guys in the past. And then we have library. And library is basically think of it as the library of all the extensions that you have built. So we were talking about it before where we had all the different co-pilot implementations that we offered, but 
where do you see those because they won't show up in your copilot list? And the answer is you'll see it in the library. Um, so needless to say, you can filter these and all of those type of things. And if you click add an item here, you will get to the same place you would have gotten to if you were having to choose between what were you wanting to extend. So with that, I'm going to focus this more on uh, co-pilots specifically. So I'm going to go into uh, this particular co-pilot here, which is just an example. It's like a Contoso example that I have, and we'll explore kind of what it looks like in here. So you'll notice that now our navigation at the top has changed a bit. You're going to see an overview screen on knowledge, topics, actions, analytics, and channels. I, I believe in the old one it was on the left, but now it's up here at the top. And then you're going to have like a publish settings and a hamburger menu here. So let's explore the overview one first and then we'll walk our way through. So first thing it's going to be, this is your sort of your overview. And this, um, if you want some additional information, you can look at this. This is just kind of a, uh, a thing to help you get started. So if you want information, you could also click this button and make it go away. And now you're in the core of what is the overview of this copilot. And you'll see that when you have new copilots, you can have descriptions and things of that nature. You can come in and edit them. You can change the icon, change the name of the copilot, give a different description. And then the instructions, again, are going to be the information about what it's supposed to do, what it's not supposed to do, how you want it to talk, all of those type of things. Um, and then we'll scroll down and you'll see that this sort of follows the top up here, which is going to give you here's information about the knowledge. You'll see here that uh, that there's a checkbox to turn on and off model knowledge. I will go into and cut a video specifically just on knowledge. So be looking for that. And then what what this provides is the list of all the different piece knowledge sources that you have. Then we have our topics that will show up here, which is just a quick view of your topics. Then you'll have your actions and then you'll have your publishing status. So let's actually click into each of these. And by the way, if you, if you want to see, hit the see alls on any of these, you'll just go to these panes. So let's take a look here. This is the new knowledge pane which if you want to think of it as the replacement for generative answers for the most part, it's sort of what, it, what this is. So we'll, again, I'll go into more depth on this in a knowledge specific video because it would take too long in this particular one. But the idea here is that this is where you can come in and add knowledge and you can see the status of this knowledge because some things need to be indexed as an example. And you can see here, that you can also click to add knowledge and you're gonna see all these different knowledge types that you can add and there's a bunch of new stuff in here. Now, the key thing is that with this, uh, and this would be about as deep as I'll go here, is that now you have the ability to put in a knowledge description and we'll go further into that once we get into the knowledge video. So with that this is going to give you all the different things that you can talk to your co-pilot about and so if i wanted to ask a question about you know um this one is connected to like the surface site so i can ask uh what are the specs of a surface pro 9 and you're going to see that it will answer this question because of the fact that we have knowledge connected into this co-pilot um, and there it goes now if we go into topics these are the topics that you have created within your co-pilot so a lot of custom topics that you want to build and things of that nature um, i would highly encourage you if you haven't seen the video that i did on the new details pane here that lets you do inputs and outputs and details on this, highly recommend that you go take a look at that because that's a very impactful change that's happened into topics. However, this is where you can go look at all your different topics. You can see 
the trigger phrases and things like this. And notice that there's even a preview that you can hover over things now. And you can see the description, if there are any errors, who's editing and last person that modified it and when. And then as always, you can see all of your topics, just your custom ones, and then also your system topics. And you'll see here that the conversational boosting topic is there by default now. And that is because it is owned by default because now knowledge is available um, at all times. So we'll keep moving on to actions. Now, some people will go, well, what are these? You know, we call them generative actions. We call them plug-in actions. We're just going to simplify it down and just call these actions. And what these are is going to be the ability for you to wrap a connector or for you to have like a power automate flow. You can see I've got a bunch of power automate flows here. Um, but if I was looking for like service now, for example, uh, I can search for any of the different connectors and be able to bring those in as well as any skills that have been connected and things of that nature. So that is where you go in and you can create your actions now. And the rest of it is pretty much the same as what you're used to when it comes to actions. There's definitely been some improvements to actions, which I will talk about in a more dedicated video uh, later. Analytics. Uh, analytics is a, many of you are fully aware of the analytics page. There is a boost conversations uh, component of this, and there is a early access uh, program that you can go sign up for that is basically to let you start looking at the new analytics platform. A lot of you are gonna be super excited uh, to see some enhancements on the uh, analytics and things of that nature. And then I'm gonna move to channels. Now you'll notice that the channels are all grayed out and that's because of the fact that we have now set the default for any new copilot since uh, back at Ignite, I think, um, we had set that the default is going to be set specifically to Teams-based authentication. So you'll need to change your authentication settings or set up custom auth to be able to get to some of these other channels because right now the only one that's available is Teams. And you'll also see that there's a customer engagement hub and things like that that are starting to pop up in here as well. And you should expect that this is going to continue to develop, but this will be the place for you to be able to go see all the different channels and configure those channels. Now, we'll move on over and we'll say here is where if you wanted to publish, and if you hit publish, you can just go through and it's the same publishing process that you're used to in the past. Nothing really new here per se, um, at, but let's go into the settings. So the settings are going to be where all of the different really com detailed configs are going to be. So these are things that are less common that you would need to be able to do, such as export. Um, you can delete. You have... Uh, where you have your advanced settings, where, you know, application insights and all of these things. So this should look very familiar. Um, there's AI integration tools. Again, if you're familiar with the old UI, this is just moved into this location. And then the generative AI tab is very different now. The generative AI tab, yes, this is where you can control the content moderation level. But you'll notice that uh, generative answers isn't there anymore because of the fact that, again, knowledge is displacing it. So you don't need to worry about this. This is where you choose between the classic NLU or if you want to do dynamic chaining, which we're just calling the generative, uh, like generative orchestrator at this point. And so you'll see that this is how you can flip that on and off and move it around. If you move this to generative, it's going to use a large language model at the top end uh, instead of you having to train trigger phrases. So then we move on to security. And in security, we were talking about all the different things. So this is where you have, where you can share your authentication, your web channel security, all of the things that you you should already be fully aware of. But notice, like I said, that you're now authenticating with Microsoft by default. So if you want that to open up to anonymous, you have to set that. Uh, then your entities are now 
over here, as well as skills. If you wanted to create skills, languages, and adding additional language translations for your bot. And then this is if you wanted to use an external NLU provider uh, in the case where you wanted to use the Microsoft Copilot Studio NLU, or if you wanted to use like uh, the CLU technology out of Azure. So all of that is where those things have been set. And then back over here, you've got some, uh, a little hamburger menu, which lets you go to the demo website. Assuming you've published, you have export, import, delete, and share. So these are just like little quick menus to get you there. And then lastly, this is what turns on and off the test canvas. Now I am going to show you a couple of small things just because it has changed just a little bit. And that is if you are looking to say that you want to track between topics, you'll come in here and you'll track between topics. Also know that there's a new manage connection screen. And that is because now whenever you're going to connect with a connector, you can choose the authentication being the user's authentication or the copilot admin and whether or not you want it to be the copilot that's uh, configured uh, configuration to be the connection for the user. So just know that that's uh, available. You have saving a snapshot. This is actually really cool guys because if you've ever wanted to save a snapshot of a conversation and see that conversation transcript, it can do that for you. You have debug mode on so you can turn that on and off. So this will give you um, more insight on maybe what you need to do within the canvas and things of that nature. So all of that's really nice. You'll see here, if you recall, we had a we have the copilot that helps you with your building your copilot. You have the comments, you have your variables and you know tracking your test. You can see here uh, the different ones. And then you have your topic checker, which is looking for errors and giving you debug. And then again, this is the details, which we talked about. That's really important with the inputs and outputs. And then you have analytics and open the code editor so that you can go into the code behind and then you can close that back. We also can jump between really quick as well as search between all the different topics that you might have. And so all of this is really nice. Now there is one slight change that will happen and I'm going to switch to a different copilot just to show this to you. And so I have a different copilot here that I've been playing around with. And this one has a little bit different settings. It it's set up to use the generative and that does change some stuff in the UX. What it mainly changes within the UX is it's going to change uh, a couple of different things around how the topics are set up you'll see that now in your custom topics, you're going to have prompts instead of trigger phrases. And then the other part about this is that you're going to see now you get this, which is your ability to trace what's going on. And then over here is where you can say whether you want to track between topics. So when you are in the generative uh, NLU, know that you'll need to turn this on and if you want it to follow on custom topics, you have to turn it on here. Um, so those are sort of the key things to, to keep an eye on. Here's the other view of that. One last thing is you'll see that the web chat experience and the chat interface has been modernized as well, which is really nice uh, because it's much more visually appealing. So with that, this is kind of the big changes that we've done inside of Copilot Studio as far as the UX. I hope this video was super helpful for you. If you would like to get more content on Copilot Studio, please make sure you like and subscribe to my channel. And as always, you can try Copilot Studio at aka.ms slash try Copilot Studio.